everyone. Thank yeah. you all for joining us today. We are live today with our recreation time. And today we are doing a teen chat, teen talk today. So I want you to sit back, relax. I want you to type in the chat on Facebook. We had a little bit of a delay, but we know that God is on our side and he's helping us out to be successful. So at this time, I'm going to be turning over to Sister Shani. She is our host and we will go from there. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, today, we will be talking about um, help. I don't know where I fit in the church. Um, we will be talking to the team that you see on your screen right now, um, having them chime in their own opinions and their experiences. But we also want you guys on who are joining us on Facebook um, to chime in um, and be a part of the conversation as well. Um, so before we begin, I would like to ask Carla to open us up in prayer. All right. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come together within this space and talk amongst each other and bring you into this conversation, God. Despite all the problems and issues that we've been having to get onto this, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless this talk. You, your spirit will flow within us and we will get things done. So I ask that you just be with us during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Carla. Okay, so the topic is help. I don't know where I fit into the church. Um, so we all know that we all, you know, belong to a local church. And many times what we see happening in our local churches is that um, there are like set gifts and talents that are accepted. So it's either you're a preacher, it's either you're a teacher, it's either you're a praise and worship leader or a dancer. Um, or a musician and there isn't much room for many other talents to shine um, and so what that results in is many people who enter the church end up feeling like they don't belong um, like they can't contribute anything to the body um, so I want you guys to chime in on that um, and how do you feel about that and have you ever experienced something like that where you felt like you don't belong in the church because there's no room for your talents or your gifts to be expressed he mentioned um, there not being youth services um, and a lot of the things that we see happening in church um, are for or, or caters um, mainly to the adults. Um, so we're going to have somebody else pick up the ball. Um, so Carla, would you like to chime in? Sure. Um, I also feel that way. I feel like a lot of things that happen within church do cater to the adults. And I also feel like this generation is very different from the previous generation. So the things that our generation is into are not the things that the previous generation is into. I also feel like piggybacking off of the question, only certain skill sets and gifts are accepted within the uh -huh. church and they're only catered to them. I do feel like part of the problem is like the youth are not connecting to their elders. And if you don't get to know a person, then you won't get to know what gift sets they have. And so you can't really foster and nurture those gifts if you never get to know what gift it is, in fact, that they have. Wow. So how would you recommend um, for that gift, for that nurturing um, to take place? What would you recommend um, happen? I feel like the first step is as simple as starting conversation and getting to know the youth in your church, getting to know their interests, their hobbies, and even just seeing their personalities and how they interact with other people because a gift set doesn't have to be something like playing an instrument or uh -huh. dancing very well it could be something as simple as knowing how to lead or knowing how to follow instructions that in itself can be a gift set and so starting conversations and fostering connections with people can help these gift sets to bloom okay. all right um does anybody else want to chime in abby um Ezra? Um, so I definitely do agree with the fact that a lot of times the youth and the elders don't clash as much. And then that leads to the fact of not accepting the new gifts. Um, for example, in today's generation, hip hop is a very big and extraordinary thing in the youth. Um, everyone knows every single rap artist that is out now. And a lot of 
young Christian people use rap as a way of expressing who they are through Christ. But in the elder generation, rap is not really a traditional type of song that is used. And so it's kind of viewed as iffy, as like, oh, is that really gospel? Um, you have to come in terms with the fact that, as Carla said, this is a new generation, and people are going to connect with God in different ways. And instead of cutting down, which is seen in not only local churches, but in the church as a general, compared like history um, Christian hip hop to regular gospel, there's a really big difference. You have to learn to accept that and then from there build on top of it. So I know that now there are more hip hop artists who are Christian that's that's really pulling the youth out. Um, it would be really helpful if those certain artists could just encourage people through their music, um, have a little tidbit at the end of their songs those who are Christian who are interested in this, you can continue to do what you're interested in, you know, spread the gospel through your lyrics, you know, just encouraging them to do what they love in a way that's easy for them to understand is something that would really help um, the gifts bloom, in my opinion. And how would you recommend um, that we implement that into our local churches? Um, well, I know for my local church, there's um, about two different um, elders, the older generation who actually do rap. So it'd be great for um, those few elders to work with the kids who are interested. Um, so having a little session at least once a week or at least once every Sunday, for those interested in rap alone, work with that specific leader in the church. For those um, interested in music alone, work with that specific leader set groups in each and every of the local churches, who's interested in what, have a survey collected, and then from there, pick your designated leader in the elder group to teach and pass it on to the next generation. Okay, all right. All right, Ezra and Elton, what do you guys? Uh, I fully agree with um, Carla and Abby say, the church is very focused more on the older, like generation when we as a youth are going to be leading soon because especially like with this virus you saw that it completely and mostly eliminated the older generation which means that we got to hurry up and start getting our stuff together because they're not going to be here for too long oh. i hope that did not come out wrong um but going we understand I, I hope you get the concept i'm trying to say i don't mean that in any uh, any offensive way but I feel like the youth are not taken serious at at all. It's, it's more heavily focused on the adults, but also I feel like the youth are not too interested at the same time. So I'm not just only going to put that on the adult because we play a part in it too. Uh, I feel like if you have a talent or you good at something to speak up, tell the adults in the church. Now, if they don't try to do anything on it, reach for the higher level of people in the church, like pastor, deacon, somebody else, or just reach out to somebody else that's not in your church. And what I did is like with my talent, I have the gift of speech, I do preaching and motivational speaking. I started to do it on YouTube and then transfer it into um, church because uh, this lady at my church that goes by the name of Sister K, she recognized my talent and she recognized it could be good, um, to be used in church and that she wanted a youth to be able to use their talent in front of everybody. And she asked me to preach at an event, I almost said no to it. Cause I was like, I was scared. Like I, I speak in front of a camera, not in, not in front of a bunch of people. So I was very hesitant about it, but I went ahead and did it, made a couple mistakes, but the audience was so supportive that they corrected me and I just went along and it just like, I can't like explain to you that experience. It just felt so good. And I want other teams to be able to feel like whether you're going up there to do poem, singing, right? Whatever you're doing, like just feel that feeling. I feel like we need to speak up, say our talents, say what we're good at, and also the adults to kind of elaborate on it and help us along the way. And I think you brought up, thank you, Azan. I think you brought up a very important point. Um, you stated that you had you started your your YouTube channel first, and then that got recognition, and then you were able to bring it into the church. 
Um, so how would you recommend for um, kids or teens who are interested um, in sharing their talents with the church that the church be their starting ground rather than um, another medium? How would you recommend um, uh, how would I recommend that? Network. Okay. One thing that has helped me a lot is networking. Anytime I'm at a church event, I'm around people, I always be like, so you know what? Like, I make YouTube videos, I make YouTube videos, and this and that. Like, network. Tell as much people as you can. And through that, you're able to have more connections and stuff like that. And um, the lady that picked me to preach, I was the one that told her I was doing YouTube in the first place. Like, she didn't know. And you, you got to speak up. Don't hit your talent. Like, tell people in your church, there's, there's going to be somebody in there that's going to give you an opportunity. And maybe the first opportunity that you get may not involve your talent, mm -hmm. but it will benefit you in the long run. And I've been given so many opportunities since I've told everybody about the channel to do stuff that had nothing to do with my talent and have stuff to do with my talent. But what I realized is that every opportunity benefits you in the long run. Like, for example, uh, with me helping out with the planning for the Pioneer Camp, with the job I want to do in the future, this is going to help um, along with that, help with the planning. So I don't I don't see it as, you know, they're not, they not using my time to preach and the motivational speak. I just use it as it's going to help me in the long run. Like, you just got to bring your ego down and be like, you know what? Let God work. He's giving me these opportunities. Let me just take it. Just put it in God's hands and he'll, he'll got you. And ever since I've done that, I've been given so many opportunities and I just love it. I don't turn down anything unless I really just don't want to do it. Really good advice. Um, Elton, what are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts are normally like whenever like someone's trying to find a talent in church, like they'll normally get pushed towards like the same ministry, maybe like something like singing dancing and stuff mm -hmm. maybe public and most of the time like sometimes people are like scared to like try some public first i think that most people don't like give notice like other ministry like if they want to do something like low key at first they could do something like a pan a pantry ministry helps out for like a church event and stuff maybe that's their calling but like everyone like normally get pushed towards like singing dancing and stuff but like there's other ministries that like need help that like they could like try pushing people, more people in that direction Okay. So what do you suggest um, the church can do differently um, in order to cater to those um, to those other talents that we might have um, that we feel like, you know, there isn't enough room for so that everybody doesn't get pushed for the same set of things? Just like ask them to like maybe test out each ministry or like see where you feel most comfortable. So at least, you know, like what like you're good at or like what you would like like doing. It's like, yeah, just like explore around the ministry and see like which one you fit in best with. All right. Um, so I have a question for all of you. What are some talents that you feel like you have or that you consider to be hidden talents or talents that you feel like you've kind of disregarded and you're like, oh, well, the church is in the place for that. I'll probably, you know, share it at school or elsewhere. Um, what are some other talents that you guys might have? Okay, um, I'll start. Um, I've always loved music. I've always loved singing. But what a lot of people didn't know about me is that I could actually write. It wasn't until recently when I was given the opportunity by, um, it was the leaders of the children ministry, if I believe, um, to really share my talent in spoken word and then also help out the children who are interested in spoken word. So I think it was about two years ago, a lady at our church named Sister Peggy started a program for those interested in different things. And she was one who really gave me the opportunity of really displaying my talent of writing and also displaying the talent of students and kids who love to write. So I was able to work with um, them and really help them bring that out of themselves um, and it was like a great opportunity for me because then I was able to relate to my church like this is a talent that these kids have as well as I have and it could be used more. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, I'll say the same thing as Abby. Uh, I'm a very good writer and I involved that with like my videos. Majority of the things that I say in my videos, I write it before. 
Cause um when I when I used to like first record, I used to just do it off the top of the head. And I just noticed with, with like editing, I was making way too much mistake and it was getting annoying. So I was like, you know what? Let me just write everything down I'm gonna say, memorize it and just shoot it and it just helped me out a lot. Carla? Um, for me, I feel like I had one of those talents that not is not normally used in the church. Like everyone's been saying that they've been pushed into ministry or singing or dancing. Um, although I do have those talents, I'm very good at organizing things. I'm a very good planner. And I feel like that's not something that the church would be willing to look into. So I never shared it with them because I'm pretty young. I'm not going to be like, yeah, I can totally organize this event because no one's going to be like, yeah, we think you should do it. So that's probably something. So I'm really good at organizing things and planning events. Wow. Okay. So have you ever like attempted to like help out in organizing something or? Um, at certain points, I have helped in small ways, but not large scale ways because I was never given that opportunity. Oh, okay. I see Brother Nathaniel raising his hand. Do you have something to chime in? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, um, obviously I'm not a team, but I like hearing what y'all are saying. Um, man, unfortunately, there's a lot of similitudes, um, similarities to what y'all are saying. I think one of the things that help, and I, one of the, I just want to really also speak to my Carla's point, um, just piggybacking on it, that I think some of it also, too, is, and I'm just praying that as people watch, they'll see that there's a need to just really adjust um, right. how the, they approach um, church or kingdom culture. Um, that's very important because if you don't facilitate, if you're only facilitating one generation, and that's something my pastor, Bishop Hendricks, um, has been, I'm sorry, I know it's was name drop, but that's my pastor. Everybody yeah. knows my pastor. Um, uh, <laughs> one of the things I loved about, and I continue to love about serving with them is that is cognizant of making our experience intergenerational. And um, if you're only catering to one and not the other, you can compromise your future. Um, and you can also compromise your present. So, and, and, I, and I like the fact that, and then I'll, I'll back off, but it's, it's more than just your ability to do the arts because everybody that's grown up in church will tell you somewhere in the arts they were. Right. Um, whether it's a choir, whether it was doing music, right. um, or even every now and again, they might do a sermonette if they saw that they had the charisma or the potential to do that. Um, but somebody like a caller who her gifting might be in administration, um, the culture has to be discerning of what the youth bring to the table, especially this generation now. What you're yeah. saying is what my generation as a millennial was also struggling with, and unfortunately is not perfected. It's getting better, but it's not perfected. Because you guys are, I would consider generation after me the centennial generation. And if that's still some of your clarion cries, then it just shows that we still, while we're making progress, culturally, we still have a, a bit of a ways to go to really accommodate the fullness of the gifts and the persons that you are, which is another conversation for another day. So, but that's just, that's, that's another thing in of itself. Because unless you're embraced to who you are, flaws and all, and that you're on your spiritual journey, you're not going to ever really feel comfortable bringing what you have to the table. If you're not comfortable, you're not going to bring all of what you got to the table. Okay. So it's all about culture as well. Um, piggybacking off of that, I also feel like, especially within church, everyone always thinks it's about the arts and it's not because if the church is supposed to be functioning as a body, every part of your body is important. Otherwise you wouldn't have it. Like your head is just as important as your ear, which is just as important as your pinky. And if you don't have all your body parts, you're not functioning to your maximum capacity. And I feel like that's one of the problems that we have in the church. They're only functioning to the parts that they think are important. So they're catering to the head, they're catering to the arms, but they're not worrying about their earlobe or they're not worrying about their pinky toe. And I feel like that's something that we need to be cautious about. Carla, people are chiming in and saying facts, facts. Um, <laughs> the people agree with you. Um, I agree with you. I feel like there are a lot of times um, when we tend to disregard the other body parts of the church 
um, not realizing that when God called us to unity, he didn't call us to sameness. Um, he, did, he called us to be unique and unified. Um, and we have lost our ability to be unique um, just through religiousness, you know, just being religious. Um, we've, we've been conformed to, you know, whatever mold has already, that has already been established for the church. Um, so does anybody else want to chime in? Um, I'm loving this conversation. Go ahead. And so I'd like to um, back. Well, mine. Oh. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, um, Abby, Please. you can go then, Jalen. Okay. So I'd like to chime in to what Carla said about, <clears throat> pardon me, the body parts and, like, they're not functioning in the church. I feel like that also goes with the generation. It's the same thing for the, the different generations. Especially in today's day and age, it seems as if the church is losing its youth. As if, like, the elder generation didn't cater to them. They're not taking care of that body part. So it falls off. Like, when your arm gets chopped off or your foot gets chopped off, that's what it feels like. And I would like to relate it back to the gifts and not catering to the gifts that the youth have to bring it up and not paying attention to the youth specifically and only paying attention to one generation. That's something that also needs to be discussed as not only in the local churches, but in church as a whole. Because if I was to go down south, it would be the same thing. Like there's a giant gap between them and that's something that we really need to discuss today we need to discuss how to fix that why it is like that in the first place and then definitely how to fix that how to get more young people back into the church there's people who grew up in a church that you don't see anymore and it's because they're not being cared for they're not being catered to there's nothing for them there and so that's something that we really need to fix Dylan? Yeah, so I agree with Carla and Abby, um, because like once you have youth that's in the church, I feel like they like after a, like after a while they have multiple callings onto them. So like once they're in the church, like let's say they're good at writing, let's you know they could be good at, as leaders and at positions. And I feel like as long as you have multiple, as long as they're in the church, they can have multiple callings, which and how benefit the church as a body as a whole. Right, right. Um, so checking our Facebook, um, so someone commented and said, um, I think we most certainly need to make an adjustment in the most strategic way um, that incorporates all generations, something that is out of the box, but in the book. Um, how would you guys <laughs> comment on that? I see, I see where the Miss Nathaniel. Um. That's good. I'm, I wanted to say this real quick. Um, to address that comment specifically, um, we have to also be um, sensitive and discerning of the time that we're in. Um, the Bible talks about the tribe Issachar always knew that they were aware of the time and knew how to move about in First Chronicles 12. Um, we might need to recover our ability to rightly see and rightly discern um, what our generations have to offer. Um, not just, and I like what Jalen said, it's not just one gift. I believe in a time like never before, you're seeing the multiplicity of gifts and talents um, coming from these gener the, the generations present and the one that is coming up now. Um, the way to really, I guess, say, answer that last part, be out the box, but in the book, I would like to, I would just say that if we understand that we're meant to influence and change the world, you can't do that if you're not actually in the world. Now, let me preface this by saying this. I'm not talking about in behaviors and mentalities. Right. I'm talking about in infiltration and how to um, influence a culture for Christ. Some of us, and I think the blessing of this pandemic is forcing the issue of us to actually be the church beyond the walls. Mm -hmm. Some people are struggling with that because they were okay being a Christian in the walls. Right. So that, that's one box that I believe has long been shattered. What I think we just want to make sure is happening is that your infiltration, how you're changing the world, how you're influencing lives is really lining up with how um, Christ gave it to us in the great commission. You know, um, it's important that yes, it is in the book, but our methodology, let it be out the box. The, the message doesn't change. 
I remember um, a preacher saying that years ago. The method has to change for the sake of how the culture is ever evolving. But the message is not changing. The message doesn't change. The method and how it's executed, how it's brought to life, is what needs to be adjusted, just speaking from the minister's lens. Thank you. Okay. Um, Elton, I, I think you wanted to share. Um, I was saying um, to the question you asked, right? Mm -hmm. I, like, you know, normally like, every church we have like an event where like they come together, you leaders and stuff, and everybody speak about like mm -hmm. changing or making the future. I think maybe like they should have like a few youths also come in and like chime in too. It's like it's like balance because like it's different being like um a student in a class versus being the teacher. It's like it like help out a lot to see like growth and maybe it might work a little bit together. It's like every age group have like somebody to come in and speak and see like how we can improve. Oh, that is a great um. Go ahead, Ezra. I think you have something. To add fully agree with that. I feel like the youth should be a part of decision making. Saying decision making, obviously we cannot be a part of like financially, stuff like that. But stuff that we can be a part of, we need to be a part of because yeah, we gotta start in the youth now. Cause how, how are we going out to run a church if we've never been given the opportunities to run the church? Like I wanna see a Sunday where the youth just run everything. I've sub I've sub touching the money, but run everything. Wow. Yes. Um, so I'd like to share something. Uh -huh. um, so trying to mix what everyone has been saying, uh, what I feel could be done is you start, you start them off when they're young. You have the older generation teaching the newer generation. So um, I know in my church, we have, we have children's church and then we have regular church. And I know something that we're starting is youth church. So basically every Sunday there's going to be a church for those specifically 14 to 21 because it seems like it's as if once they come from children's church, they're lost in adult church. So that's something that me and my sister brought up to the pastor and we asked if there could be something to fix that and now there is. So what we could do is structures. So now that there's children's church, youth church, and adult church. And in children's church, you teach them everything there is to know about God and the church. Give them the lessons, you know, the lesson about Jacob and his brothers, the lesson about Noah's Ark. But at the same time, teach them about the different positions in the church. Teach them about being an usher, being a public relations director, being a minister. That's one thing that we don't really see as much. We, we're always taught the regular things as praise and worship or praise dance, but we're not really taught how to be a minister, how to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. um, we're more told from the elder generation, we see this on your life, this is your calling, but it's not really administered to us in a way that we could understand. It's not really, let me sit down with you and explain to you what that means on your life since it's your calling. So that's something that they could definitely start to do, sit down with the kids and teach them not only the word of God, but teach them the different positions in the church. And then once they go off into the youth church, then that's when they start to use their talents. And it's more of a one-on-one -on -one time with their specific leader in charge with whatever talent they have. So if they're being a minister, if that's what their calling is, if that's what we're seen as, then you have one-on-one -on -one time with the different ministers in the church and you're, like, you're explaining more in depth. And then you know, because I think there's a test to become a minister. They sit down with you, you have your discussion, and they're teaching you, they're teaching you, and then bam, as soon as you're done with youth church, then you could go off into adult church and be the minister that you were called to be. I think what you have to do is use everyone, start them when they're young, teach them the different things, see what they, they think of themselves, and um, see what you um, what God has shown in your eyes. So if a, if a child is interested in music and they want to be a musician, but you see them as something else, have a conversation with them. Find a way that they could mix both of them together. And you start them when they're young um, and in children's church, lead them into youth church um, to better deepen their gift. And then in adult church is when they actually use that gift and then pass it on to the next generation. So it's a recurring cycle. Um, we have a hand raised, Sister Venetia, and then we go to Ezron, and then 
unfortunately, our conversation will have to come to a pause. Go ahead, Sister Denise. Yes, Sister Shanice. Um, one thing I have, I, I couldn't leave this live without giving it up to my children's church director. This lady, when I tell you, she, she goes in. She goes above and beyond with these children in my church. Like, it is crazy. She tried to study these children. She knows their gifts, their talents. And she used each and every one. Like, sometimes I got to ask her, how you do this? Mm -hmm. She's like, I just watch them, and I'm not trying to put them in a box. I let everybody showcase what they can do and what they are about to do. And these children, they are very successful. But the issue comes in when they are finished with her, it's like they're gone to the wind. But the good thing is that they always remember what she teaches them. And she tries to put on a day every June. She puts on a talent show or children's ministry show. And she let from the baby to the youth showcase their talent. Uh -huh. And sometimes the adults in the church are looking like, did these children really got these talents? Mm -hmm. Like from, she let them do the, she, she, like basically she does a whole church the whole church program and they take over and that's something we always talk about because my husband is the the youth director so they collaborate together most of the time but she does a great job so it's where they take it after so I agree with these children. After they become youths, they need to utilize them more. Well, maybe we need to find out what methodologies um, this person that you're giving praise uses so that we can incorporate it, um, not just in one local church, but across um, all other churches. Um, then we have Ezron, and then I'll give my closing remark. I was going to say... Uh, first, we need to do is to try to get to know the youth before anything, because to me, once you get to know a person, you're able to help them even better. Because when you go to church, you see youth every single week. You probably may not talk to them. That person uh -huh. may be a wonderful singer, but you're not gonna know because you don't talk to them. Right, right, right. He's good at this, he may be good at that. So I say, just approach them as it are uh, getting to know you, then let everything fall after that because when you get to know them you get to know how they operate how they work what their comfort zone is and you're better to help somebody you're better able to help somebody by knowing how they operate all right, all right. Okay. i thank you all for chiming in this has been a very um innovative um conversation it has been interesting i thank you all for your ideas I thank you for your solutions and I thank you for sharing your own experiences. Um, so I will close with a quote um, from J.C. Ryle and it reads, anything whereby we may glorify God is a talent. Our gifts, our influence, our money, our knowledge, our health, our strength, our time, our senses, our reason, our intellect, our memory, our affections, our privileges, as members of Christ's body, our advantages and possessors of the Bible. All of these are talents, and we should learn to use them all um, and create platforms when platforms aren't being created for us. All right, so pioneers, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Facebook family, I thank you for joining us. I thank you for all that you have said. Um, and hopefully we will be able to implement um, all the ideas that were mentioned here today. Yes, and I want to say special thanks to Shanice and the team of young people again, and also to Mr. Nathaniel and Sister Venetia for coming on. We give a wave, everybody give a wave before we leave. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again today, and we will see you soon.